Welcome back. You're still watching the Tuesday edition of Business Morning on Channel Television. Just before we went on that short break, we were looking at airport concessioning and we're speaking with the managing director and chief executive officer of FAN, which is the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, George Uresi. Well, we're take, taking a look at another issue, which is also hugging the front burners. We're talking about our gross domestic product, which is how we the basis for which we measure development and growth in of our economy and I'll be joined on the program now by an economist Wale Uluo and we'll be looking at this for the next couple of minutes. Thank you so much Wale for joining us this Thank morning. you for having me Harriet. Well from the projection of the Minister of National Planning Dr. Shamshuddin Osman according to him Nigeria on the global ranking of its GDP has moved about eight steps. He said we were 44th position in 2010 and now we are 36th position as of last year. Is this supposed to be good news or bad news? Absolutely good news. Now, if it is good news, how has this translated to development and growth? Yeah, the, the problem that we are seeing in Nigeria today is a big paradox. On one hand, we are having very robust macroeconomic numbers in terms of inflation, in terms of foreign exchange stability, in terms of growth in GDP, and the rest of them. But on the other hand, we are having increase in unemployment, we're having an um, increase in the uh, people who are, below the, who are dropping below the poverty line, and interest rate is also going to the roofs. So you have a situation where, on one hand, we're doing very well, but the opportunity cost hmm. is also beginning to you know, minimize the potential effect of what this would have had in terms of cascading down to the people. So, if the so that the people can then begin to see the values in those numbers, how it affects their how it lives. Affects their lives. Yes. Now, if the rate seems to be performing very well, which sectors are actually driving this growth? If you look at the composition of the Nigerian economy, you know, different sectors, different contribution to the economy. In terms of GDP, agri accounts for about 40%, then oil and gas is about 15%, and I think services close to 30%. What about but the non -oil in terms oil of, sector? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm generalizing now. Okay. In terms of employment, you will see that agri contributes about 70%, services probably about 20 something percent, and then oil and gas, very negligible percentage, less than seven. So you have a mono economy where you have the oil and gas that has been doing well in terms of the quantity of crude oil that we're selling in the international market, and also in terms of the price that we are getting for the same quantity of crude oil that we're selling. Now, a lot of the GDP growth is being driven by the oil and gas sector. And this is a sector that does not employ people. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, it employs less than 5% of the Nigerian population. Those sectors that will employ people are the manufacturing sector and the agri sector. Now, agri is doing well with regards to employment. Not in terms of the quality of the employment, but in terms of the gross numbers. You know, a lot of small, small people, artisans, and the rest of them, farm workers. Those are not executive jobs. Those, those are not very good uh, paying jobs. But at least people are engaged. So accounting for 70%, the sector that is growing very well, which is the oil and gas, is virtually not employing anybody, including the financial sector, the banks. By the time you aggregate all the people they have employed, is 0, 0.0 something percent of our population. So the issue is this. If agri is doing so well, the challenge we have to make it meaningful is that agri must be linked to the financial sector. If you look at the Nigerian stock exchange, all the companies listed on the exchange, you are, li you are not likely to see more than two agro-allied um, um, companies on the. So there is a breakdown in that linkage. Agri must be linked to the financial sector so that agri can access funds. And that is the only way agri can grow and continue to play the role that it's playing now and help its game. Okay, well, now we have the launch of the, the NAS, NASD yeah. uh, OTC market, and then we know that for a certainty that non-listed equities can come and trade on this yeah. platform. Would it be a good avenue also for um, agri-companies to, to take? Would it be a good suggestion for them to be, to be looking at at this moment? It will be indirectly. Let me put it this way. Um, in the capital market, you have two markets. You have the primary market and you have the secondary market. The capital market has recovered a lot in the last two to three years, with respect to getting to where it was around in 2008, 2009. But that is the secondary market. The 
real role of the primary market is to enable companies to raise long-term funds. We've not been having that in the last three to four years. So the primary end of the capital market, which is the one that companies go to to make public offer for subscription of their shares so that they can raise money and expand and increase output and be able to scale up and employ more people, that aspect of the market is still completely inactive. Mm. The little activities we've been seeing there are for rice issues. Okay. And those ones don't translate to so much. So the issue is this. The secondary market is doing well. Now the MASD is also a secondary market arm of the capital market. Because what it's saying is that you have shares, I have shares. If I'm interested in selling my shares, you are interested in buying, you know. There can be an exchange. It's a platform that you can sell and I can buy. But where is the money going to? The money is going from the seller, uh, from the buyer to the seller. It's not going to the companies that are listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That is the difference. But if companies come to the primary market and they raise money, that money comes into their account and they can use it to do more business and then employ more people. So we must not neglect that part of the, of the market. The NSD is a good initiative. I commend the uh, market operators that have put this together and the regulators for the fast track um, approval and launch. But we have still not solved the, the, the primary market uh, problems. Although this ordinarily should help the primary market to begin to look attractive because whatever you issue and sell in the primary market, we still find their way into the secondary market anyway. Well, let's, let's still go back to the issue that we're looking at um, the global ranking of our GDP. Concerns have been raised in some quarters over the quality of our economic data. Do, do you share these concerns? Um, let me put it this way. You know, we cannot um, begin to debate facts. Mm. If there is a fact on the table, we can look at it in the absence of any other data. We must use what we have and rely on it. Um, by and large, I will not say our data is too porous because I see a lot of data in the international space, the United Nations data, the IMF data, the Wikipedia, and the rest and of the them. World Bank. They seem to be consistent in terms of what they have come up with with regards to our macroeconomic um, indicators. So our data may still have challenges, but they are not completely porous. That the economy is growing is not in doubt. That the macroeconomic fundamentals are looking good it's not in doubt, but the challenge we have is the challenge of transition. Having stabilized the variables, we now have to say, how will it impact on the ordinary man on the street so that these numbers can begin to make sense to them. And that in itself is both a fiscal um, issue and also a monetary issue. The monetary issue of it is that whatever we're doing that is putting us in a position to achieve these robust um, reserves, that is putting us in a position to achieve these very low inflation figures, there's an opportunity cost for achieving those. And that opportunity cost has been the interest rate that has gone up. So is it if not interest rates are if, up, if we're going to measure it, our GDP now, yes. is it not better for us to be looking at the quality of life to that use it to, be nice. to measure what our economic performance is as regards our GDP? You are absolutely correct. And in terms of quality of life, it's going down. But not only that, Let's even look at what the GDP says. By definition, GDP is gross domestic product. That is what is produced in the entire economy by everybody in Nigeria, whether you are from India, you are from America, you are mobile producing, whether you are MTN. As long as, you're in as, long as you are producing in Nigeria, it will constitute part of our gross domestic product. But there's another variant of it, which is the gross national product. And nobody's talking about that. What the gross national product says is that what has been produced by Nigerians themselves, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. So you take what Nigerians have produced outside, you add it to what Nigerians have produced within their own country, and then you have the gross national product. That will give you an indication as to how productive as our people been, and then two, how much of the money is likely to stay in Nigeria and drive further growth. Because if MTN makes money, they're going to repatriate their dividend, they are going to repatriate uh, remittances. If they are taking money from abroad or from their parent company to come and do business here, they are going to continue to pay interest on those um, loans and the rest of them. So money will go outside Nigeria at the end of the day, as long as these monies or this GDP are produced by non-Nigerians or non-Nigerian corporate entities. That is part of the challenge. So it will be interesting to know what our GNP is, which is the gross national product as opposed to the gross domestic product, then it will also be interesting to know 
um, the data that relates to manufacturing, industrial capacity utilization. These are the drivers of employment. These are the drivers of domestic growth and consumption. If you just look at growth generally, <laughs> we might find sectors growing and the GDP posting very good numbers, but we have employment so increasing on the other street. side. We have uh, poverty increasing on the other side. So we have to balance it. But we must commend the economic team. So far, so good. But that transition must be made now. I think we have reached that point where we begin to say, how does it affect people? How would they make sense of these numbers? And the way they can make sense of it is also a monetary phenomenon. Interest rate must find its way to come down. If interest rate does not come down, the cost of doing business will be high. Households and businesses will not have access to cheap money. Now, it makes sense to people when they can go to their banks and take a mortgage and pay over 10, 20, 30 years at a reasonable interest rate. At today's rate, 20 something percent, nobody is going to take mortgages. So people want to own their houses, people want to have their cars, people want to be able to do stuff that they like doing. And they must have access to credits because you cannot fund all, everything from your own equity. It's not possible. Most economies that have grown have created that kind of window where individuals, households, and businesses can have access to funds at reasonable rates and reasonable tenor. Now, in light of this, in light of this, our vision of becoming one of the top 20 economies by the year 2020, can it be achieved? Looking at the fact, looking at where we stand right now with our GDP, can we achieve being among the top 20 economies by the year 2020? Um, I don't it's just think, five, it's just six years away. I don't think it would be realistic. But my advice would be this. I don't want Nigeria to take Vision 2020 as an end in itself. Let's take it as a process, as a means to an end. So that when we get to 2020 and we are not in the first 20, then we begin to um, dampen our enthusiasm. No, we don't have to become one of the 20 by 2020. Mm. But as long as we continue to improve at a very fast rate on our ranking, the world is already noticing. They're already looking at Nigeria, taking a second look, and seeing how they can bring money and take advantage of opportunities. So for me, those countries we will need to displace with respect to this um, Vision 2020, they are very, very big countries too in terms of economy. And a lot of them are also reforming like we are reforming. So the difference is that for me, for us to achieve 2020, there were some assumptions. And part of the assumption is that we must be growing at about 15 percent. We've not grown at 15 percent in the last four or five years. So the possibility of achieving it is yeah, doubtful. But whether we do well with regards to moving close to it, definitely we will achieve that. And as long as we can achieve that, I'm positive because you don't grow an economy to the first 20 in three years, five years, 10 years. Some people, it takes them 25 years. But consistency in the application of policies we have in this regard. Well, thank you so much, Wale, for joining us this morning on the show. Thank I've been you, speaking with an economic analyst, Wale Oluo, and we've been looking at Nigeria's GDP ranking in the last three years and the steps that we've taken to ensure that the numbers actually translate to the average Nigerian 